If you were born somewhere between the 80s and the early 2000s and you're a gamer, then you probably spent a substantial amount of time playing Call of Duty. I'm sure you guys remember the early days of YouTube where Call of Duty just dominated the gaming space with Let's Plays and live commentaries. And how could I forget the hilariously toxic Modern Warfare 2 lobbies? So it goes without saying that Call of Duty is a pretty storied franchise, having released over 21 mainline games if you include Warzone and Warzone 2.0. Yeah, 21. That's a lot of games, and it's safe to assume that over the years, there has to have been a lot of overpowered guns, right? Hello and welcome back to another episode of Push 2 Talk, the series where I always talk about particular topics in and around the gaming sphere to help keep you guys in the loop. This is unfortunately the last episode of season two of Push to Talk. So why not go out with a bit of a bang? Because you guessed it, today we are going to be listing out in no particular order, the top 10 most overpowered guns throughout Call of Duty history. Do let me know down in the comments if I've missed any guns in particular, because I am but a man and I make mistakes. But before we get into that, this video is sponsored by Factor 75. As somebody who works a full-time job and is trying to climb the Modern Warfare 2 ranked play ladder, time is extremely limited for me. Sometimes I just don't want to worry about prepping food and just get on with the grind. That's where Factor comes in. Factor's chef-created meals are fresh, never frozen, and designed by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium, science-backed nutritional quality. Factor's chef-created meals are fresh, never frozen, and designed by dietitians to ensure every meal is packed with premium, science-backed nutritional quality, which, in my opinion, sounds like what every gamer needs. Factor cuts out the stress of meal planning and extensive prepping, so meals come together in minutes. And if you're the type of person who can't really eat the same thing day in and day out, Factor has a timeless and delicious menu which is updated weekly and includes over 27 meals and over 34 add-on options. If you want to get in on this, then use our special link that's on screen right now or down in the description. Or you can go to go.factor75.com and use the code FACTORSE33264 for 50% off your first box. Thank you to Factor for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to the top 10 most overpowered guns in Call of Duty history. Number 10, the FAL. The FAL, or the FAL, was probably the most dominant gun in Black Ops 2, but you may not remember because it wasn't really that popular in pub matches, mainly because it was semi-automatic. But the thing is, it was beyond overpowered in ranked play. You see, on the pro level, it could melt SMGs, especially with trigger stops, which every pro had. And because of those trigger stops, it took away the semi-auto disadvantage. This led to Treyarch banning the weapon in ranked play for the first time in Call of Duty history. Honestly, I think that if it didn't get banned in time, Black Ops 2 would have devolved into a 2-3 FAL meta, with only one objective SMG for each team, and that wouldn't be very fun to watch. Number 9, the MP7. The MP7 machine gun has been in a lot of Call of Duty games, but one of the most ridiculous versions of the gun was in Modern Warfare 3 back in 2011. Usually SMGs are good up close, but the MP7 was different. It was a jack of all trades of sorts that could be used in any situation. Seriously, it had no kickback and could shoot further than any other gun in the game. Its range could outdo some of the best assault rifles, and for that, it takes the number 9 spot. Number 8, the Famous. Traditionally in Call of Duty, the Famous could only shoot in bursts, but in Black Ops 1 they made it fully automatic. This made it much faster to take out enemies and reduced how much the gun jumps around when you shoot it. They did make it a bit harder to control after some updates, but it was still one of the most popular guns in multiplayer. It got to a point where in the esports scene, all four players on a team would use the Famous. That's how overpowered it was. Number 7 the MP40. Now the MP40 has been in quite a few Call of Duties, most recently Vanguard, but the one in particular that I'm talking about is the World at War rendition. I think it's safe to say it was the craziest most powerful SMG from the World War II era that they've ever put in a COD game. And the best part was that you could get it super early in the game, so everyone had a chance to use it. People loved this gun because it was one of the best weapons in the whole franchise up to that point. And then people figured out that if you added a 64 round drum attachment and 
and the steady aim perk, it was even more insane. The gun barely kicked back at all and you had enough bullets to wipe out the whole enemy team a few times round before you even needed to reload. Definitely something that would not slide in today's CODs. Number 6, the ACR. Modern Warfare 2 was a game that FPS enthusiasts still talk about in awe. It's known for having some of the most unforgettable weapons in Call of Duty's long history. One such weapon that stood out was the ACR assault rifle, which quickly became a fan favourite. The ACR was a weapon that excelled in every area. Whether you wanted to take down enemies from far away, shoot from the hip in close combat, or rush from objective to objective and wipe out the opposing team. It was a weapon that allowed players to dominate effortlessly, and that's why it's at number 6. Number 5 the M16A4. Let's take a trip down memory lane all the way back to 2007 with Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. With it being the first game in the series to ditch the old World War II theme and switch it up to modern times, that meant of course we'd see more modern guns. One of the guns that stood out was the M16A4A. Now, most burst weapons in COD are just average as they usually have pretty high recoil, but the M16A4A was a game changer. Its 3 round shot was super accurate and deadly as you were able to mow down enemies in just one burst. It was available to everyone right from the get go, which made it even more overpowered. Number 4 the MV4 Flatline. Now let's bring it to the jetpack era. The MV4 assault rifle was a beast of a weapon. It quickly became the go-to choice for players in both multiplayer and the competitive scene. But what really makes it stand out were the weapon variants. Some of these stat-based variations turned average guns into powerhouses, but the MV4's flatline variant took an already great gun and made it unstoppable. And then there's the legendary version of the MV4, which basically turned it into a cheat code. With increased damage and unlimited range, you could take out enemies from across the map without even worrying about bullet drop. If that's not OP, then I don't know what is. Number three, the grenade launcher, AKA the noob tube. Do you guys remember the good old days of noob tubing? Cause I sure do. The grenade launcher was a handy attachment that allowed you to shoot grenades over long distances, causing massive explosions. While it started out as just an attachment, the grenade launcher became so popular that standalone versions of it appeared in many COD titles. It's no wonder it earned the nickname noob tube among COD 4 players. It was so easy to use that even beginners could take out enemies with it. All you had to do was point and shoot in the right direction and boom you've blown up a bad guy. In fact some players got so good with it that they even came up with lineups so that you were able to take out enemies directly from spawn. Although I didn't play COD 4 multiplayer, the fact that the attachment remained throughout so many iterations of COD meant that I too suffered. Number 2, the Akimbo Basilisk Snake Shot. By itself, the Basilisk was a typical run-of-the-mill revolver, but that's all changed with its introduction in Warzone as it had an Akimbo attachment. The Akimbo attachment let you hold two of them at once, the downside being you can't aim down sights anymore, but having two guns makes up for it with extra firepower. Then people started using the Snake Shot ammo with it, and it became insane. Obviously, the devs inevitably nerfed it, but even though it got nerfed, people still remember just how crazy the Akimbo Snake Shot combo was. Fans of Call of Duty will always look back on it with a mix of awe and horror. Number 1, the Akimbo Model 1887. Akimbo weapons always seem to cause problems in Call of Duty, but some of you may not know that the Akimbo attachment has been tormenting the game since the original Modern Warfare 2, namely the Model 1887 shotgun. By itself, it was a pretty simple and powerful secondary weapon, but once you added the Akimbo attachment, it became a real menace. I mean, you'd turn around a corner and you'd be met with two shotguns to the face. The reload time was lightning fast. The Akimbo Model 1887s were definitely the most overpowered parts of the game. It was crazy how you could just take out an enemy from any distance with just one precise shot. It was almost too much if you ask me. And that's it for this episode of Push to Talk. If I did miss any guns that you think deserve to be on this list, then do let me know down in the comment section below. And as I said last week, this is the final episode of season two of Push to Talk. Like I said during last season's finale, I have a blast doing this series, but I think it's time for me to take a step back and kind of take a broader look at things and see how I can innovate and kind of utilize this platform that I've been given. But until I am back, be sure to like the video, subscribe if you want to see more content just like this, and obviously ding dong the notification bell to be notified when we upload next, because we upload videos every single week. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Lewis from Kakutopere, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Ciao for now.